this talk is looking at the missile technology control regime. It aims to explore using Iran as a case study to address some of the historical evidence um, to learn what the tipping points might have been. Are we ready to apply this to other countries or states? And this pres presentation expresses my own view as an individual um, and is not attributed to AWE or anyone associated with the company. Initiated in 1950s, the US um, and Iran started to develop close ties under the Atoms for Peace program. This relationship developed further with weapon procurement taking place significantly in 1972. This was when President Nixon agreed to allow the Shah of Iran to purchase virtually any type of US conventionary weaponry in the US arsenal, including advanced F-14, Airwax aircrafts and Phoenix and Maverick missiles. Seven years later, in 1979, the Iranian revolution overthrew the government and saw Ayatollah Khomeini take power. The revolution was mainly led by oil, as well as social economical reasons. At the time, no one could have predicted the revolution or its magnitude, although it's interesting to note that five years earlier, the US Department of Defense expressed concerns of Iran's ambitious weapons procurement goals. As I stated earlier, this presentation aims to discuss the role of the Missile Technology Control Regime, the MTCR. It was originally initiated in 1987 by the Industrial Seven, so that's the UK, US, Canada, France, Italy, Germany, and Japan. The MTCR aimed to address concerns of weapons of mass destruction proliferation. Today, there are 34 members. The objective is to restrict proliferation of missiles, complete delivery systems, and related technologies of those systems through export controls, dialogue, and outreach. These technologies are clarified in the annex. There are two categories outlining the items to be controlled. Category one items include complete delivery systems and subsystems capable of delivering a payload of at least 500 kilograms to a range of at least 300 kilometers. This includes unmanned aerial vehicles and plays really well to the previous talk on drones. <laughs> Category two items include less other sensitive and dual use missile related components and technologies. And this also includes production equipment. However, the biggest pitfall of the MTCR is that membership is voluntary. There is no legally binding obligations on its members. The MTCR does not stop a country or state from pursuing its own research to gain information and technological advancement, nor does it stop or restrict the pursuit of scientific knowledge leading to latent capability. As an aside, several years ago, a study was conducted in America whereby a group of young physicists were placed in a room with very little help and told to design a nuclear device. The help given was very minimal, a few calculations here and there, but the study proved that the group did not take long to come up with a design. If a country or state has the intention to have missile technology and weapons of mass destruction, it only takes time, money, and political will for the science to accelerate. But what causes a country or state to get to the point of pursuing weapons of mass destruction? What can we learn looking back at Iran? For Iran, it seems to have started back in 1979. The revolution saw Ayatollah Khomeini take power, and it was at this point that the Iranian-Israeli tensions began. Khomeini announced an end to the alleged nuclear weapons program, but provided support from central government to nuclear technology, and quite interestingly, stem cell research. In 1980-88, the Iran-Iraq war took place, and not long after, Khomeini died. Iran was left in a state of national survival mode. The alleged nuclear weapons program was restarted. Iran found itself in a new position with capable military complexes, an extremely good starting point. As we move along the timeline, regional tensions and conflicts besieged Iran, followed by sanctions imposed, all of which could have been attributed to influencing their weapons of mass destruction ambitions. Survival ap appeared to be the main aim, and potentially reclaiming their former status as a regional superpower. It seems as though every time a conflict occurred, 
the Iranians increased or demonstrated their military capability, maybe in anticipation, maybe to feel reassured, or maybe as means of a deterrent. Either way, Iran has been left internationally isolated and disparaged. A more recent example of this is amongst the tensions of the 2003 Iraq War, Iran launched the Pehon missile boat into the Caspian Sea waters to protect the Iranian interests. Yet another show of its ability to defend and protect. Iran has a large and mainly young population. More than half the population is under 35, according to the 2011 census, and this population has grown up in an environment of change and challenge. It is unfair to say that all of this is due to the US and their relations with Iran between 1915 and 1978. Iran has also had many other weaponry connections, especially in the 1980s during the Iran-Iraq war. Some of the alleged include cooperation between Iran and North Korea on nuclear issues. In the mid-1980s, it's alleged that North Korea supplied a small number of Waisong-5 chemical warheads. It's also claimed around the same time that China and Iran worked together on missile technology, resulting in a production facility. And interestingly, during Iran's War Week parade of 98, 87, 1987, um, there were some Russian Scud B missiles on show. Of course, Iran is not innocent either. It's alleged they supply Hezbollah with weaponry, enhancing proliferation in the region. So where is Iran now? According to some websites, Iran has the fastest growth rate in science and technology. It has had several Shahab-3 missile flights for communication satellites, the first in 1998. The Iranian Space Agency has ambitions of sending a person to space, with the most recent success being the safe return of a monkey. To conclude, looking at the historical evidence, Iran has shown to be reactive to situations along its borders, as well as increasing what appears to be we weapons of mass destruction, proliferation, whilst in direct conflict. These alone are major tipping points for any nation. Combined with its already sophisticated military capability, is it unfeasible to think nuclear might be next? Iran's military complexes gave it a good grounding, and by working with various nations on missile procurement and development, cooperation, science and technology advanced. The MTCR did not stop this. Even with proliferation quite evident, how can the missile technology control regime be enforced when membership is voluntary and not legally binding? For me, the key question is, is the MTCR still relevant? Iran's space program has demonstrated this technology by successfully launching satellites, and all of the technology acquired can be transferred if the intent is there. With hindsight and experience from Iran, are we at the point where as a group of democratic Western nations, we have confidence in identifying, identifying future threat nations who intentionally or as a consequence may start along a similar path? Could the MTCR truly prevent proliferation? Are we there yet? In my view, more can be done to understand the main drivers, but from exploring the Iranian evidence, the answer is no. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Saria. You kept uh, perfectly to...